Welcome back, my friends, to the YouTube channel. I'm Gene DeLaSalle, I'm president of Audioholics, and we have... Hugo Rivera, Vice President of Marketing. Gene, how are you doing today, man? Doing great on a rainy day, but let's move forward and be happy. Yeah, today we're grateful to have the, uh, the, the items that save our equipment, because otherwise we're going to get, with all this thunder, we're gonna have all sorts of blowouts over here. Yeah, the lightning capital of the world. We are well protected here at, at Audioholics yeah, in the, Florida. The search protectors really pay off. You know what? Uh, let's talk about a different topic today because I got some emails this morning again talking about the impedance selector switch. I think that's a good topic. This is a topic that will not die. No yeah. matter what we write about it, no matter what test measurements we show, people are still wanting to set that impedance switch to the low setting because they think it's going to make their speakers better match the power of their amplifier. And it's like, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And not force it to drink. We're going to try to make you drink today. Okay? <laughs> Please accept this water. <laughs> Please, okay? This is your prophecy today. Do not use that switch. And let me tell you a little bit of history why that switch exists. Yes, we started covering this topic for the Denon receiver video that we did. But I, you know, we promised to go ahead and cover it in more detail. Yeah, so basically a lot of these AV receivers that are coming out today have this thing called an impedance selector switch. And the whole reason why that switch is there is so they could stamp 4 ohms certified on the back of the receiver. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying 6 to 8 ohms for speaker loads, now it could say 4 to 8 ohms or higher, right? And they're not doing anything magical in the receiver. They're not giving you bigger heat sinks. They're, they're definitely not giving you bigger power supplies as no, you're seeing sure. in the with the trends of receivers today now, the power supplies keep shrinking, keep shrinking as they add more technology. Yeah. So the only thing they could do at this point now is to starve the receiver. And what they're doing to get this forum certification through UL or even CSA, whoever they're certifying their receivers with, is they're actually stepping the voltage down that goes to the amplifiers. So when UL goes and tests this receiver, and let's say it tested at eight ohms at 100 watts, right? Mm -hmm. When you flip that switch down, if you don't flip the switch down, ideally an amp should double down. So when you do a forum load, you should get 200 watts, mm -hmm. okay? Because you're doing, you're trying to maintain a constant voltage. That's what amplifiers try to do. They try to give you a constant voltage over varying impedances, ideally in a textbook. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you put a forum load on an amplifier that's capable of doubling down, you'll get 200 watts. Well, that's right. not happening with a lot of these receivers, okay? Mm -hmm. And what happens when you start heating up these receivers is the power supplies get hot, the heat sinks get hot. In order to get the forum certification, the chassis temperature has to maintain a certain degree. Mm -hmm. So the only way to do that with these amplifiers, these little receivers to get their forum certification is to step the rail voltage down. And what that does is that lets the amplifier clip or distort a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. So when they go and UL goes and tests this four ohm load, instead of getting the 200 watts, they flip the switch, they're gonna clip at about 100 watts or less sometimes. Right. We saw that with the Denon, the thing clipped at like 40 watts. Yeah, I believe so. It was something crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So this switch is actually starving your speakers of power. It's not helping them. And when you starve your speakers of power, you put that switch on four ohms, you start driving a couple of channels, and if you have four ohm speakers, your amplifier is gonna clip much sooner. When your amplifier clips, it gets distortion harmonics that go above the fundamentals, which is what blows out tweeters. Mm -hmm. So you're doing yourself more harm than good by flipping that switch from eight ohms to four ohms, regardless of your speaker impedance. Yeah. Keep it at eight. Do listen, not starve. Listen to me now and believe me later. <laughs> That's what Hans and Franz would do. Don't be a girly man. Leave it at eight ohms. <laughs> Don't believe the bro science out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just it's stupid. Why it's like taking a it's like taking a V eight, okay? And leave it in an eco mode the whole time, just so you could save a little bit of money on gas. <laughs> you driving a Corvette with a big ass engine like that, do you really want to starve it or do you want to like feel the power and use it for what it's meant for? Exactly. Yeah. I think that pretty much sums it up, you know. So the only thing I recommend is leave it at eight ohms, but give mm -hmm. your receiver plenty of ventilation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's very unlikely that you're gonna overload it unless you're just cranking it the whole time. At that point you need to get external amplification or you need to get more efficient speakers. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But the solution is never to put the receiver at four ohms. That switch is only there to get the four ohm rating on the product when it's tested by UL, period. There you go, guys. You've heard the truth right here. Don't shoot the messenger. I know we're gonna get hate saying, that sounds better in four ohms. That's called the placebo effect.
<laughs> that's true and that exists I'll tell you what it's been proven <laughs> so I mean if you want to do your four ohms go right ahead but uh, we're just giving you the truth over here keep it at eight it's like Tommy boy said I could get a good look at a t-bone if I stick my head up a cow's ass but I just take a butcher's word on it <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> On that note, I think we're done with this topic, Gene. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> I said my piece. Awesome, guys. Well, if you like this video, feel free to click like on the button below, share it with your friends, comment, let us know what you think, and feel free to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos like this one. Until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.